this is what I want to talk about today. So this is a double burr hand grinder from China. This is the uh, Yihua double burr grinder, or you can find it in the USA called the OnePlug double burr hand grinder. But I just wanted to quickly discuss this grinder, what I think about it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And then that's it, because I have to send this off to my good friend Lance Hedrick in a little. So we'll go over this right now and you'll be able to see what I think about this. So let's talk about what this is. Double burr hand grinder. Wow, that's like, that's crazy, right? That's like a, a, a mini Cafetech MC4 in a single hand grinder. We have a pre-breaker burr up here, and then we have the actual grinding cutting burr uh, down here. So you have two burrs. I think this is going to be a really interesting trend going forward when it comes to hand grinders, because this grinder here has made life very easy for grinding all roast levels in under all different brewing methods. You can grind light roast Nordic style espresso with this grinder because of that pre-breaker. That pre-breaker really ensures that you're able to have a great time. I think double burr hand grinders are going to be probably the future or the trend that I think things are, are going to go towards because this to me is one of the easiest grinders to use across roast levels and brewing methods. I can grind ultra light roast espresso with this grinder and that's because there is this top pre-breaker burr which makes your life a lot easier and i do want to say that this is one of the best built grinders i have ever used one thing that i think you will find really interesting is the fact that everything is actually reversed so instead of grinding right you have to grind left everything is reverse threaded so as you see i'm going right here and it is loosening so just it's something to keep in mind and i think that might be because it's a double burr or maybe because the actual burn here kind of looks like another hand grinder Ooh, i wonder which hand grinder that's going to be by the way, this catch cup is magnetic. It's actually quite nice, but I have found sometimes grounds will kind of end up on the edges there, just like it'll slip off and it'll kind of just end up out, out here. So you just want to be careful of that. It's also not the strongest of magnets in the world. So you don't you just want to be careful of uh, knocking that out. But uh, let me go ahead and just show you the lower burr. I'm not actually going to show you the top burr here because that requires taking this rubber piece off. But uh, another YouTuber from Taiwan named Tiger, he actually disassembled the entire thing and, and showed you all of that. And he's a really cool guy. So you should totally check out his video. It's going to probably be more comprehensive than this, but it's all in Mandarin. Like I said, this is reverse threaded. So to go coarser, it's actually go right. And to go finer, it's go left. And you don't actually have too, too much control over like each of the steps of how fine you can go, but you can indeed grind for espresso. I would say that if you are using something like a decent, which requires very, very fine grinds, you might have a little bit of trouble with light roast espresso if you're trying to pull traditional light roast espresso. But for most people, for all brewing methods and most machines, this can actually cover the entire grind range and you can actually grind all coffees. It's quite fascinating. But uh, let me go ahead and uh, take this out here. Now, there is one thing that I do want to note is that there is a bit of coffee down here, and that's just kind of the nature of this hand grinder. But you don't get a lot of very fine control per click. I actually don't know the exact micron steps, uh, and I don't really trust what the manufacturer will say here. But we'll go ahead and take this bottom burr out, and I think you'll be very, very surprised. Wow, massively surprised about what burr set this exactly looks like. But everything's built so nicely. Like all of these components, the metal components feel uh, really, really nice. But if I take this burr set, if I take this lower burr out here, for example, so it goes out like this, look at this burr. I don't know, man, this kind of looks like uh, a lot of other burr sets, <coughs> C40. And then up here, you'll see a smaller burr set, which is like a, a 38 mil, or it's a slightly smaller than this. So that's kind of the grinder part of it, wood top here, and just really nice precision metal components out in, in, in this grinder. And it's, it's, actually, it's just built really nicely. Some additional things too, as well, is uh, a lot of you'll you'll find a lot of grinders from Asia will do this is they'll provide you a a sifter or a sieve in here and this I believe is a 500 micron uh, sieve uh, little filter here that fits under or fits into uh, the catch cup here so basically what you can do 
is you can have this little sieve in here like this, and then you can go and uh, basically grind here, shake it up, and all of your fines will get catched in here. And it's, uh, I don't really use it, but uh, it is a nice option. And I do want to note that getting the coffee grounds out of this grinder is uh, a little bit annoying because of this opening here. There's no like easy way to just dump the coffee out. But um, aside from that, this has been a fantastic grinder. What is, what still really surprises me is how nicely machined all of these components are. I haven't mentioned this yet, but this is going to be around 200 to 300. There's a big price variance because of where you can get it from. There was a brief period where these were on Amazon, but you can indeed buy these from like Taobao, AliExpress, Alibaba, but this is just a really nicely built grinder. And this is about a two pound, two, two-ish pounds. Now, let me also show you what else you get. You get a nice little carrying case that comes with it. And in the carrying case, we have a place for the actual grinder, two little like puffers, and then a brush because you definitely will need a brush with this. And you get a nice little replacement uh, sleeve here for your grinder. But yeah, this is all metal, 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 really, really nice. And you do really wanna be careful of just grounds getting in here. Like it, this is not the lowest retention of hand grinders, but I think the results and just the usage of this grinder is fantastic. Let me just now set this to the finest and just grind some say for, which is like pretty light, I would say. Haha, <laughs> jokes there. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to see there. Um, and the grind speed on this is also really, really fast. And I'll bring out another hand grinder, which I think is very comparable as well when it comes to taste, uh, just to show you how much more difficult it is to grind. And that's just because we have the double burr that's doing the pre-breaking for us. So let me grab some coffee and I'll be back. So I have uh, some say here, and I'm just gonna do five grams in this grinder and I'll also do five grams in this. So this is the B plus Apollo, which uses a 48 millimeter Itel Mill conical burr, which is, I would say very comparable when it comes to flavors. The top burr here, I think is like a 35 or 36. It's a little bit smaller. And that breaker burr here is that like 38 C40 style burr. Wow, very, very controversial. So I'm gonna put 10 grams just in here. I do want to note that the hopper here is really, really small. Like I think 25, 30 grams in here, if you're lucky, it does feel very cramped. And also there is uh, no little like rubber cover here, or it's not like the C40 where you use the actual, like it, there's no lid built in there. So some popcorning may occur. But uh, this is just no RDT. Like I'm just putting beans straight in there. And uh, yeah, this is set to the finest and you cannot grind spinning right like every other grinder. You have to spin left. So look at this. This is on the finest. And this is just, it's like you can't, you can't do this with other grinders. So 10 grams. It's easy. And this is Say, which is like probably some of the lighter stuff. Like I think this is lighter than what most people would probably be pulling. And we hear that pre-breaker initially. What's also nice about this is it's quiet. So there we go. This is 10 grams there. Like that's pretty easy and it's nice and quiet. But as you see there, some grounds kind of just end up out there, but that's not really that big of a deal. I would just brush them through, pouring those grounds out. It's kind of a little bit painful. Like you gotta really make sure they go through there, but that is indeed, that is indeed espresso fine. It's not the cleanest of grinders, I would say, but it's so easy to use. And that's just maybe a little rare for me, at least someone who uses like a Pharos and, and whatnot. You know, I think this is what most people's experiences are, are going to be like if you try to grind for an ultralight. And really that ease of use is, is really nice. But uh, after I just show you this, I'm going to tell you about how it tastes and things that I, um, you know, maybe I wish were a little bit different about the grinder but you're kind of already seeing it. It's really just a little messy to use, but uh, all right, let me go ahead and uh, grind also 10 grams in this at an espresso setting. 
I put 10 grams in this guy. This is the B plus Apollo uses a 48 mil, but there's only a single burr in here versus two. So let's go ahead and grind. And as you can see here, this is much more difficult at espresso fine. Like this is probably your experience if you have any of these hand grinders and you're trying to grind Nordic ultralights at espresso is you gotta really, really get in there. It's not like this can't be done, but it's just so much more difficult. And the burr set is a little bit bigger in here, but it's really this pre-breaker that is saving you here when it comes to just ease of use. I'm not, I'm not even gonna really bother trying to finish grinding this, uh, but yeah, that is kind of my typical experience with even the C40 and other hand grinders. And none of that happens with this guy. This guy is just, it's, it's really easy to use. Let me go ahead and actually real quick show you how coarse this top burr is, the pre-breaker. So I'm just gonna toss a few beans in here. And you cannot adjust the coarseness of the top burr, by the way, but uh, go ahead and do this. Cause you can do this cause the top burr, and she saw a little bit of popcorn there, but um, that's how coarse, like this is ultra, ultra coarse, but because we're already breaking this top part down, it makes it so that when you finally hits that kind of final cutting part, it's super, super easy to actually grind with. Just want to interrupt the video real quick by thanking today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online courses and members across 150 countries. You can basically learn about anything you want. And when you sign up, you can get personalized suggestions and explore pretty much any topic you want. I've actually been really enjoying a class from Michael Phillips. He's the director of training at Blue Bottle Coffee. I've never seen a class that just breaks down complex coffee topics in such an easy and digestible way. And that's seen in Michael's class from plant to cup brew an amazing cup of coffee. I just love how simple Michael makes it to understand how to take a complex topic like tasting coffee and taking a property such as acidity and interpreting that as a flavor note in cup when you drink coffee. And that's just because of how these topics are broken down in a really easy digestible lesson format that you can find when you use Skillshare. I also really like that there is a transcript for each of the sections of the video so you ensure that you don't miss anything. If you want to learn from people just like Michael, you can use the link below. The first thousand people to use the link below or code Brian Kwan will receive one month free of Skillshare. Let me kind of talk about what it tastes like in some brief comparisons to like the Apollo C40, Laga Mini, uh, and, and other things. So this is one of these, like you copy the C40 burr, you know, they're all like C40 style. And it's actually really, really nice. To me, it's definitely not as clear, like it's pretty clear, but it's not as clear as something like the 48 Itamils in the B plus Apollo or even the C40. But what's really nice about this is I feel like everything else is just really nice in cup. So we get really great body, really great finish. It still has that conical finish, but you can indeed do at least pour overs and espresso of light roast coffees. For ultra lights, you definitely cannot do low ratio espresso with this guy. You do wanna pull those uh, ratios a bit longer. But what's been fascinating to me is that I think this actually produces, I would say a more enjoyable cup or like other properties in cup and especially how it finishes are really nice. I did like do a brief comparison of this with the C40. I did indeed find the C40 a little bit clearer and I think that's something that you might really enjoy. I did think that this had slightly more body or like overall like properties in cup just to me were a little bit more enjoyable but the C40 was clearer and I did do some other comparisons too with like the Apollo. I think the Apollo is clearer and it finishes better, but I think this just has like a nice rounding to it that those other burrs don't have. Like C40 to me doesn't have the roundness that this has, but that roundness could also be interpreted as not as clear. But the finish of this seems to just be a little bit more enjoyable to me. The point here is that like all of this this can produce a really enjoyable cup. And you of course can also do those darker roast coffees. In espresso, I did find this to have a little bit more body than like even the Laga Mini and C40. And I think that's because of the top breaker burr, but I'll have someone like Lance test it. He knows a little bit more about taste than I do, but that's just kind of my opinion there. 
Another interesting thing, and that's just because I've been currently testing them, are the uh, Lagom Mini Moonshine Burrs. Lagom Mini Moonshine Burrs, to me, remind me a lot of the C40. They're really clear, but the finish on them is not as smooth or not as rounded like this is. So to me, I actually think this is an incredible hand grinder for the money. I honestly would just buy this because it's just easy to use. Now, you can't really find them on Amazon anymore. You can find them on AliExpress and everything. And they do actually make a motorizer for this. So that's like pretty, like this is a really great choice. I actually am kind of sad I'm sending this off to Lance. So now let me tell you about what I don't like about this grinder. So I kind of like, this is just a little weird to me, spinning in the opposite direction to grind. I actually think that, uh, at least if I read on like the Momentum website, which uses a very similar design to this, is that it's more ergonomic. I just, I'm just not used to it. So that is kind of something that annoys me. Another thing that really bothers me with this is if I'm trying to do larger pours and if I'm using larger beans, is this hopper here, like 30 grams at most it's kind of annoying to use if you put in a lot of beans but because like it doesn't matter how dense those beans are that top breaker burr just makes your life so easy so that can be forgiven uh but everything else being like reverse threaded is just something that to me i need it like it, it's it is annoying and i think you're going to need to get used to that and there are kind of two other slight complaints that i have it is really this, you know, this is like not the cleanest experience out there. Uh, I have not actually tried RDTing with this because I do not know if you should do that with this burr set. You probably could. It probably wouldn't really matter considering how the price of this thing and what you're getting. But also, uh, the one thing is I do wish you had more control over how fine you could grind. Basically, for espresso, I'm just always at the finest setting. And I've been finding that it is pretty forgiving in terms of flavor because of just how this finishes and the overall body you get. But it really does remind me a lot about like the MC4. This is like that baby Cafetec MC4, which is super funny to say. Uh, but I do wish that you had more granular control, kind of like C40 red clicks. But I think people have been shimming this thing, which is like very fun to say. Yeah, you can't go any finer than that. That could be a little bit annoying, but uh, I I think it's fine. Like for, for most, Brewing methods works great. The flavor is great. The experience is very, very easy to use, regardless of what grind size you use, what what density, what you know, roast level of beans you use. And I think the flavors here are are pretty good. Like across the board, you're just getting an enjoyable cup. You're getting a clear enough cup. But I think it's everything else in the experience, like that mouthfeel, the body, the like finish of it. It's pretty good. And honestly, I'm really surprised that this is so good at this price point. If you do want one that doesn't come from like AliExpress or something, there is the Momentum hand grinder. The biggest difference that I think will be worthy to think about is you'll be able to adjust the coarseness of that top burr. So I don't really know if pre-breaker coarseness really matters much. I haven't really explored that at all, but I think that is something that is going to be worthwhile considering. And I think that's a grinder that will be very similar to this, but it'll be probably easier to get. But I think this is something like, this is a sleeper grinder. Like this is really, really good. So I just wanted to show this off today, but yeah, double burr grinder from China. It's real, it's legit, it's built amazing. There are some slight quirks about it, AKA it spins the wrong way, but the overall experience of using it is probably the best that I've ever used of a grinder that doesn't have any gear ratios. And also it provides a flavor profile that I think is very approachable across the board, regardless of what brewing method you're using and roast level you're using. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. This was the Double Burr Chinese Hand Grinder. Thank you for spending time to watch the video. I'll see you guys around.